Hello and welcome to tonight's episode of Blades in the Dark, the Blackwater Exchange. This is a show about a crew of audacious career criminals and sometimes ruining people's parties. Which he, you did last week. He ruined his own party. You definitely, he definitely also has something to do Ridiculous ske- ske- spectacle. His technology went wrong. We had nothing to do with it. No. Wrecking the machine had nothing to do with it. Nope. Nothing to do with it. At it would have went wrong anyway. So um, I think it'd be probably more fun if you guys recap what happened last week in your own in your own viewpoints, mm. rather than me telling you, "Oh, this is what happened," mm. making it canon. What did What did you? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you my experience. Yes, you tell us. Golden Boy Dan <laughs> couldn't do no wrong. With the knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that like, you rolled. That's so weird. Bad. That's weird. I was like I was like a peasant of dice rolling last week, <laughs> and like Dan was like a king, like just like <laughs> slinging out like sixes, like triple. that's weird. Because my memory of it is that I just I just went to the party and had a great time, and then you oh were just god. bumbling around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. You couldn't roll any yeah. kind of a no. tree. You, was, you just couldn't. Good. You had to like push yourself, bargain just to get a four. Yes. Oh my god! It was. Oh god. I started rolling better towards the end of the. Uh, it took like three episode. goes to choke an old man out. No, no, that was at the end. I did that in one. In fair, like it was when I was doing stuff like inspecting this little light bulb um, thing he gave out. Um, so Golden Boy Dan out. could do no wrong. <laughs> you Making were... friends with one word. Yeah. Hi. Oh my god. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> best you literally had the guy who hated you. Yeah. You turned it around a flashback by t- double critting Krabs that Ditch. you were best friends, Krabs Giddich, who at first hated the fact you called him Krabs Ditch, and by the end it was your in joke where he was excluding Thaddeus <laughs> by calling himself Krabs Ditch. Right, let's let's run through it chronologically. Right. We got an invite for a party from Carvale after committing Moida. A known demon. He... No, no, not a known demon. Oh, you by us. That's what I mean. He's yeah. known by us. He's a known demon by by uh, Thaddeus and Merrick. Um, he got his invitation to this party. He did. He did. Merrick put on his best clothes. I put on Merrick's best, second best <laughs> clothes. Had them tailored. <laughs> yeah. Had them tailored. Um, we went to the party. Um, we, we, it was Horth von Drakenberg's party, basically. It was. It was, it was, um, it was. Prevalent in my history, and also um, Merrick has got a few run ins with him. He, He's someone that we have a grudge against. Yeah, he fucked, he, he fucked me over massively, so like. Thaddeus has got a big old hang up on that. You know, he's a person who likes to get revenge anyway. You know, he doesn't like to be bested in a lot of things. So, As we've seen when confronted by the police. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we went to the party. Thaddeus was sort of like looked down on a lot of the time in conjunction with the bad roles and, you know, Merrick looking great in his finery. Um, we knew there was a few... Um, like figure figureheads or like you know you've um, had like a, like a people list. of interest yes yeah. people of interest um, here wise a few of those uh, the the of them down. Lady Dunville who's like a major fixer we didn't actually get the chance to speak to her nope. a Lady Ashen you did send off an old man drunk to hit on her by mistake yeah you know, like you've heard the reputation right and he was like oh have I and then went over there <laughs> um, and the other one. We liked the sound of was Dr. Uriel Krabs Giddich, who we previously mentioned. Um, we did a flashback. Um, Merrick had actually met him in the Centralia Club. Yes. Yeah. And the f- fine establishment that is. Um, which is run by Harvale. Which, which is, is run met, by Harvale. Which is how you met so, yeah, that's sort of like the, the threads are intertwining there. But yeah. We you, kind of like. The, the kind of the subplot was that we'd gone to this party to look for, like, someone to help us out in the... Uh, yeah. The was, cultures. We wanted to go because it was um, this guy from our past. We wanted to know what he was up to. We met. We, nobody knew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also wanted to... We also wanted to try and find a way to end this war we're in with the with the vultures. There's a certain number of fixers who are there, like Lady Dunbar yeah, and Uriel, who's a, who's a lawyer. Lawyer... Just for, just for the um, the audience, a fixer is someone in, in Duskwall who will get things... Basically, it's like an underworld kind of go-between where yeah. someone who will get things done for a price. You know, if you've got a pro- problem with the law or you might want to make a witness disappear or just be quiet or yeah. you want to bribe someone or you want evidence to go, they have connections. So, like, yeah. you know, if you guys aren't sure how... Say, like, a witness in hide and you can't, guys can't get hold of them, you might go to a fixer who would know blue coat contacts 
or would know possibly ways how to, you know, find it. And Uriel's one of them. Uriel's a lawyer, but he's also known as a fixer. So that, you know, basically means he's corrupt. And yes, he will yeah. find ways, you know, if you've got enough money to get you to off. Help, yeah. To get you off the hook. Yeah, yeah. such I can. Um, that, that's basically it. Like, as I said, Merrick met him before. Like, rolled a crit. Um, like... He was basically his best friend from from then on, really. Um, yeah, you didn't crazy. you didn't start off well actually, because you started started off by calling Crab Stitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that sort of turned into a in joke um, with with the with the pair. Yeah. Didn't it? Um, after you rolled a cut. <laughs> uh, so he's sort of like the contact we gained from there. What Horth was doing, the person whose party we were at, was showcasing some new technology. Um, he developed. Which is wireless electricity. Yeah, he's saying that it's wireless electricity. Um, runs off electroplasm, but yeah. far, far less than the current conventional technology yeah. uses. And that, you know, like it's a fraction of the amount they are to power the city, but yeah. they currently use. And the lightning barrier, and his view, and what his sales pitch to you was. You know, like, you know, brag, he was supposed to say, sales, but he's bragging to you guys, you know, especially in your background with him, yeah. saying, look what I've done without you in yeah. particular. You know, I stole nothing from you. I'm my own genius. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going to basically change the history of Duskwall. Yeah. I'm going to make it so that this power, you know, Duskwall was surrounded by lightning barriers to keep out the ghosts that would literally devour the city. So the electrons were so important and he's finally found a way to make it last far longer. So we decided to sabotage it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, you did. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Yes, you did. Thaddeus <laughs> um, had an encounter with... with um, Horth, which wasn't very friendly, um, got a bit spooked. Again, the bad dice rolls, like, um, and a bit of bad judgment. Broke a light bulb. Broke a light bulb. Broke two actually. Yeah. <laughs> Crushed one out of anger. Um, yeah, we decided to sabotage it. Harvell overheard our conversation. Who is our demon friend? I'm fairly sh- sure. He- over here's all our conversation yeah yeah he he zoomed over no matter where he is he zoomed over and said he could help because we were talking about making distractions to try and get into the room which we believed the piece of technology was hidden in um Harvell, we agreed to Harvell helping us out um he helped us out by turning off all the light or blowing the power in the ho- entire room um which gave me the opportunity to then sneak out to this room and well, I used uh, one of the uh, light bulbs with a bit of, uh, what was it, fire? Flash powder or something? Uh, it, it is um, fire oil. Fire oil yeah. to try and start a fire and basically make think, make people think that the devices were the cause of it. Uh, yeah, mm. faulty. If I remember correctly, you, you basically attached it, threw it on the ground, so it looked like when the ball broke, it caused like, like an explosion or a mini fire, yep. which yeah. freaked a lot of people out, especially in the pitch black. You know, it was very just suddenly bright light. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, long story short, that is went into the um, the back room, saw this ma- these machines going crazy, Harvey um, Horth um, pointing at the engineers, saying to you need you need to get it up and running. It from Sadie's ex- experience, it looked like the machines were struggling or yeah, like running at capacity, they were like um, they were not doing well. So Horth left the room. Thaddeus went in, basically held two engineers at hostage with a with a grenade which was actually fake which is like yeah weird, weird thing um, Thaddeus wrecked the machine yes. um, made the machine basically blow up or yeah it didn't, mean, it didn't destroy I mean this, no, this, no, this machine is huge that it's like the length of like almost like I mean honestly it's like the length of like half a football field yeah you know they were overclocking it anyway they were overclocking it's, it's like, like quite thin but long like just lots of generator parts and that's what it was such a long room you know there's only a few people in there you know at the whole key point yeah. But yeah, you, you, you knew what you did to short part of it out, and basically you did definitely sabotage it. Yeah. You know, you definitely damaged it a good amount. Yeah. Engineers chased me, got into scuffle, managed to get out of the room before it went dark. Without killing anyone. Without killing anyone this time. I, I, I mean, there was an old man and he was very old. And you knocked him out? Yeah. Knocked but you didn't kill him? Out, but we didn't kill him. You think? Um, that's no, no, it. Sure. That's it. Yeah. Oh, and the final part. I mean, if I, if you guys agree, is that the the party seemed to end up with a failure for Horth, and yeah. numerous people left citing it was dangerous, and people left quite disgruntled. All that the power blowed. One of them looked like it set on fire. You know, his great grandiose display at first, which just started off so well with all these lights lighting up, and seemingly out of control. Yeah. Ended like with just this general disappointment of. 
There was a de- there was a definite shift from everybody being like really um, really impressed with the technology and trying to figure out how it worked and like seems to be going really well and then we were just like we need to sabotage this we cannot have something go well for all yeah, yeah and from that point on it was not good for him no. <laughs> and uh, so yeah you guys left and we said we pick up immediately in the carriage of Romina who's coming to pick you up. So we'll do downtime in a bit, just anything you want to catch up on. Um, but we'll jump to downtime. So as you guys drive, or I'll be driven, I should say, driven in the carriage, and, and Thaddeus, I'm presuming like you start undoing your tie, that, that stiff shirt you've got on, loosen it a bit. It was tight anyway, because it was Merrick's old... Uh, Merrick, your Merrick. clothes are not stained for once. <laughs> uh, it's rare that you've gone on a, on a mission, especially with Thaddeus, and come back with the same clothes, not blood stains. Sure. burn, damaged, vomited on, you know, there's just no stains, no bodily fluids at all, you know, whether yours or someone else's at the moment, or even animals, it's, it's all good. Um, and you can't help but think or feel a slight tingle, especially you, especially you, Merrick, especially you, I mean, you can't, it's like pins and needles, but almost throughout your whole right arm. And you think back where you shook Carvail's hand. Oh, God. Because you made the verbal agreement that you would kill someone for him at the party. Not actually at the party, sorry, at the party you made the agreement, but there was someone else there as well. Yeah. You said you'd kill him in exchange for his help. And you just think back, and your mind just comes back to whatever that was. That seemed to be that verbal agreement. And you just notice that hand kind of tingling. You both feel it, but you feel it more. As uh, the carriage rattles down the cobble streets away from Hoff's mansion. So, is there anything you wish to accomplish before going to downtime? Or no. Pay off? no. Uh, we didn't upgrade our... Oh yes, upgrade. you have two upgrades which we can do as part of payoff and downtime. So. I was thinking elite thugs. Yep. And maybe a carriage. I seem to use it quite a lot. Yeah, which probably uh, is it. Like a, another... <laughs> another carriage or a carriage or whatever it is yeah and if you get a second one you get it armoured there's two upgrades for it a second level is an armoured carriage which that's is cool. quite cool that's cool mm. it also means that basically like, if you lose one you'll always have one you know you can just replace it like your guys are going to go for you cool okay cool being at war has increased the effectiveness of our thugs they used to Skirmishes and now they're elites. So now they're elites, they get plus one. As long yeah. as they're not fighting gross foot. Because you've got your thugs, your um, cohort, right? You've got the. You've got yeah, we got, we got a cohort, yeah. yeah. Um, the Which is why now you guys can actually hold some turf and actually go off and do these things yeah. while your thugs yeah. hold off the vultures. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So they'll be. Wow, when, after war, if you guys survive, which you know, you're doing a good job, you'll, um, they'll be level. Uh, they'll be rolling three dice. Yeah, wow, awesome. will be better than us. <laughs> well, there's a group of them as well. Yeah, you know, course, yeah. safety numbers. Yeah. So. Downtime and payoff. Oh my and god. Entanglements. Oh. Lewis's Lewis's favourite and least favourite part of the game's favourite payoff is least favourite entanglement. Who are the payoff? <laughs> so get some money. After a score, you take track of your income and stock. Successful score. Which this was, I think. That was Chris Classic. Yeah. Both rep and coin. You get two rep per score by default. Now unfortunately your rep is maxed, isn't it? It is maxed. So you can't gain any. So while we you're need this war to end. You can't gain any rep until you go up a level. Oh, we should have spent something as a rep last time. Can you? You can spend rep. Um, oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, how do you spend Gain a dice? No? I'm not sure. I've not got Instead of a coin. Oh, I think it's to do another downtime activity. Ah. In which case, you might want to start doing that because. Yeah. I think it is. So I'll, I'll double check while you, yeah. while you continue. Cool. So there's that. Yep, full. You get coin based nature operation as well. Now, as I've always said, you guys get coin from you know generic things and making contacts. So I think small job, strong box, pretty small, you know, standard job. You went to a party, wasn't so much making money, is four. Except it's not. Unfortunately, due to knockoff recall in Silkshire, your profits are decreasing. That is bullshit. So you have minus one coin to your score your scores currently until this knockoff is dealt with. God damn it! Um, and you do know it is slowly but definitely beginning to grow in popularity. So you would reckon that unless you do something about it in time, you imagine your regular income of the recall market will begin to decrease. They've surely got a really low supply though, right? They, they still <laughs> they still what they have. They did. As long as they don't know how to manufacture it, you would realise. 
and they did that several. They stole it several weeks ago, and it's only recently they've started selling it. So whatever happened in that time? So you have three coins. Fair enough, three coins. To make matters worse, the crows want to. Did we pay them off last time? No. Did you? I can't remember. I think, yeah, you, did. I think, you, I did. think you did. Did you? Yeah, we we didn't. Then we did. I think. You did. You did. That's right. Yeah, you, the first one you did the box, and last one you did pay them. So, unfortunately, the crows would like that too because you are still tier one technically. What's well, Steve? Uh, that means we've only got one coin. If we pay them off, I will carry on while you make that decision. Okay. Okay. We're still in the car because money is valuable on those score and you should know what's going on before yeah definitely decisions. heat oh heat 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 dusk full a city of well, prying eyes informants live dead ghostly and otherwise we, first of all you get smooth and quiet at zero two contained pretty standard you know because even if you don't do bad things you know just generally be in the wrong place at the wrong time and get some heat so Harvale I'll have some pull in the sea. And he knows you're both there. He spoke to both of you. He also will speak to his engineers and realise who tried to threaten them with a dodge grenade. Harvale, not Harvale. Sorry, sorry. Horth, Horth. Not Harvale. Horth. <laughs> Harvale also knows you were there and also spoke to us. He also, yes, you're so far. Everything that was canon. But Horth, and they both have pull. Yeah. But Horth is the one who would be pissed off at you. So, you get one Surely heat for a high profile or a well connected target. So, that's one heat, which he is. He is high profile, he's well connected, he's got pull, he's got sway. You get one extra heat, it happened in Hostile Turf, which it definitely did. It happened on his turf, with it rather by his type of person than people. Two. You get another heat if you're at war, because basically you just have bigger attention on you. And you also get a fourth heat, because. Thaddeus was clearly seen by some of the engineers who can put his description out there. So you get four heat. Reduced to three. Three. From Merrick's contacts in the Centrulia Club. His high society contacts who help him reduce heat and put in good words here and there. You're going to have to go to jail. <laughs> what, heat, to jail. what heat level are you on? Uh, We're on wanted level two. Wanted level two of four. Of four. Heat level seven. Seven. It's not fair. There's only two of us. We can't reduce this heat. You can if you do things. It's our interest. If you went to jail at level one to level two, you'd be inside for several months. That's the average. You know, like in turn, game terms for you know how much kind of pressure the blue coat's putting on. I can't go to jail. I've got a family. And you've got anything? Just so you know, if it goes to the next level up, like because there's four levels and that takes almost like GTA ready in the yeah. stars, like how much the blue coats want you, how much pressure they yeah. they're under to rescue. You. Level three is a, a year or two. Okay, unless we. Get broken up. Unless you either reduce heat, you get broken out of jail, or someone goes down for your crimes, whether framed or not. So, you know. All right, cost where's Harker? <laughs> so, you are heat one at level two, I roll two dice at the highest. Okay. You are heat three, so I roll on that chart. Sorry, heat six, seven? seven. So, I roll on the chart. I go six. Oh, good lord. That's never good. I feel like every week, honestly, God, I'm not just saying it, we've had a different one. One, two, three, four, oh, six, seven, eight, nine. Each one's got multiple ones. So this is a new one, this one. What are you dealing with the last one? Okay. 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 So. Go into that time, what do you want to do? Oh, I'll tell you what's going on in the weekend of sport first. Please. Oh, let's have the headlines. The headlines of the Trip week. Wheel. Wow, 11. Okay, so I'm going to have to uh, read that one and properly in implement it. So, some things first of all. The next morning after the party, Merrick, you wake up and part of your hair's been cut. <laughs> Tombstone! It wasn't her, she tells you. <laughs> she comes in, she's like, yeah. It looks awful. Like, this is like a lump just taken <laughs> out. Like, just like, no, it's like someone's got shears and gone clip. Was it you? No, I do a much better job. I mean, are you asking for opinions? What do you want? <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, someone's taking a chunk of your hair, Mark. Someone's taking. Probably taking your. Just like yeah, I might taking your blood. I don't need your hair. So yeah. Some things you hear in Centralia Club as well is that most people consider Hoff von Drakenberg's party to have been little more than a publicity stunt. Rumours abound that he used whispers to fake it, which is what caused the shortage. That there were either hidden wires, or he and or he used crowd plants like actors plant in the crowd. The general feeling is that he's he's past it. He's lost it. He can't do it. He, he, whatever genius he had ten years ago, <clears throat> Fabius, you know, he took, the credit, he took the credit for it. He's lost it, and that most people think it was he was basically little more than a publicity stunt to try and get money. Yeah, you know. And that these light bulbs, while it was interesting at first, ultimately backfired, and he's got not a lot of trick for it. So, the next couple of days in Crow's Foot. It's been a couple of violent weeks in Crow's Foot. With gunshots and murders being the regular. We've largely been trying to stay out of Crow's Foot as much as we can. You have. With good reason. Because it's got worse. Yeah. So, the Lamp Blacks have taken more of Crow's Foot. Okay. But Lissa is refusing to surrender. And she has now declared open war. I mean, if, if there wasn't already, she is now officially declared in the world it's open war. The bounties are out. That's known public now. That she will, she's going to pay for anybody who can kill Bajo or Bell. Preferably both. Yeah. So violence is now a regular occurrence on the streets of the district. Lissa herself was nearly killed in a recent attack. By all accounts, from what you guys gather, she killed three men. It was in the market. Apparently, some lamp blacks and some of the defected crows were now basically considered like the other lamp blacks. Um, open fire on her, some of her crew, and she was wounded. She killed three guys. You're not sure. The rumors vary how badly wounded. Some say she was shot, some say she was stabbed. <coughs> one thing everyone agrees on is that while she fought bravely, she was wounded before, and the crew got her to safety. They got her out of there, but she herself was recently uh, hurt. Um, the red sashes have taken to see, securing their power in their academy and the immediate district around it, the immediate vicinity. They seem to have essentially given up trying to hold the rest of the district. But the Crows, Lissa's gang, are not giving it up. Um, so the Red and the Red Sashes are using their sword school like a fortress. Ooh. The people as Crows for tend to see the Lamp Blacks now as local folk heroes who are fighting against the reign of the overbearing Crows and momentum is on their side, but there are still many people who are taking Lissa's money and providing the crows, the actual crows, with information to the Lamp Black's movement and to their safe houses. Crow's foot is an open battleground right now. The Lamp Blacks have numbers and weapons, Lissa's got money and contacts, and the Red Sashes have got their school, which is, for all intents and purposes, basically a fortress. It's a good job. We're working on red sash blueprints. <laughs> and I have a red sash disguise. You also hear some news from Silkshaw. But apparently the water rats have attacked the vultures' turf and killed several of their crew. The word in the underground yes. is they've stolen on, a sizable rats. asset from the vultures. Yes! Some people are saying money, others are saying it's smuggled goods, others are saying drugs. But again... Like many rumours, the one grain they all the one grain of seeming truth they all share is that something was stolen. Apparently, the water rats um, rode in on the canals silently during the blind hour. Didn't use motor boats, used old rowing boats, and used momentum to carry them in. From what witnesses say, um, and then they used knives to cut down the vultures' crew quietly, so that a quick scuffle emerged. By that point, half the vultures were already dead. Um, a couple of witnesses report seeing a blue coat talking to the vultures while the water rats went about some bloody work. What does it all mean? But the vultures are now officially tier one. They've dropped. Ooh. So they've gone from tier two week to tier one week. Okay. Maybe they did have a lot. You guys killed several of their, se several, several of their crew the other the week. Yeah. They've made some money, but the water rats have hit them. So yeah. they've lost a piece of turf and they've lost the size of the crew. I wonder why the water rats have hit them now and not when we told them to. They might like. They might like went in and um, scoped the place out, or like yeah, scoped down the location, like, yeah, and like then, little, yeah, back doors or something. Yeah, just went sneaked in there, found out how they could get in there. You know, another time because they couldn't do it quick enough or something like that. I don't know. 
you not hear much about sashes other than the fact they're retreating into the, into the academy. They've, they're holding some like turf still, like they're holding See, around it, but they mostly it's mostly the immediate streets around the academy. I know a way we might be able to solve our little money issue. I mean, we're working on the red sash blueprints, and I'm sure like um, a gang who is at war with them would, would pay a pretty penny for uh, for for the for the map of their lair, basically. Sure. Or any any ways to get in there. <laughs> I think um, maybe it's not, but it almost feels like the Lambex have much much of the upper hand, given that they're getting the whole. Uh, they're able. They've definitely got the power, haven't they? It's just whether whether Lissa is like sneaky and does something. Um, Lambex got the weapons, the men. Yeah. Lissa's got the money and the contact. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So she she could pull a. You know, I don't know. She's, I, I get I get the feeling she's got better connections to like higher echelons of society. Yeah. So we'll go a little bit in the news, just final bits. Unfortunately, your profits are down. Oh, which is the profits are minus one co- coin, yeah. and you, your your guys, your folks, your dealers in their lovely blue silk and ties, telling you that they're getting less and less regulars. Yeah. Um, and I say you're just not selling well enough. <laughs> not the cap or something. So, with all that in mind, the crows wanting two coin from you. The Blackwater Exchange, Merrick, and so Adios. so Lissa Lissa specifically wants two coins off for us. Lissa's crew does. Lissa's yeah. crew wants two coins off for us. Liss, the crows can. I, I kind of think no. No, yeah, they're at war with two different <laughs> people. Like, what? You're gonna go at war with us as well? <sighs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. Wait, what are you thinking? You tell me. You tell me when you're ready. At some point, we're gonna have to decide on a side in this battle. <laughs> it's just going yeah, like, around. Guys, like, it's like you guys are basically going for like the guards to strip every day to work. No, we're Switzerland. <laughs> we're Switzerland. We're just sat in the middle. We're sat in the middle. Switzerland, but it's like you have to go from Sweden through the guards strip to get to Switzerland. That's what's happening. <laughs> we'll sit out. We'll sit out this one. True. We'll think about it. It's bad, like it's it's getting bad. Like you know, like most nights, like you hear gunshots every day. There's bodies strung up, and it it's got to it's getting to that point in the gangs now where it's like they're trying to one off each other. So you know, one ga- one crew, you know, a few guys get killed by one gang, another extra get killed by another one. Um, there's been grotesque displays where you know you had like you know crow um, crow shooting other crows yeah. in an execution squad, like literally lining up and killing them. There's been, there's been all report like horrible reports. Okay. I think we pay this time and this is the last time. I say we give him one coin. No. Uh, <laughs> can't afford it. We got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine, one, which two, is more than can fit in our vault. Each additional activity costs a coin or rep for downtime. Yeah, so we can rep. spend rep. We can spend oh, rep. We can spend that rep. seems really good in war. So we um, get two per. Cool. So yeah, it's fair to, fair to you guys. Sorry, something none of us knew that you could have spent a couple. Of yeah, days. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fair. Oh yeah, I guess we. I guess in in terms of coin and stuff. Allow yeah, we'll just allow you to do more. We'll give them two. We'll give them two. Give them two. Can you pay them off? Okay, cool. <sighs> that's a seven. I'll keep the I'll keep the extra one. Don't worry. Wait, what extra one? We're on, we can't. Oh, we. <laughs> oh, it's seven. <laughs> You keep that in the uh, main vault, man. Oh. Do you know what you want to do for your for your first downtime activity? Uh, I think I might just look into reducing some heat because there's no way I want a water level of three. Are you going to jail? No. I said going to jail. Um, so Next I'm... week, Dan plays a new character. <laughs> <laughs> so going to what? Hmm. <sighs> Yeah, no. Okay, right. Let's let's start. <laughs> let's start from our plan this session. Okay. Are we going to try and end the war this session? Because I hate this war so much. Yes. It's annoying me. Re- a lot. Well, I think I think there's two things we need to do. We need to end the war, and we need to get rid of this fake recall because that is obviously that's yeah. as well. It's also we think. Yeah. So if we end the war or like stop the vultures in a way, then I'd assume it would be simple enough just to send our thugs in to, to just deal with yeah. you know the, the, the fake recall and, to, and reclaim the stuff they sold they stole from us um, I guess the way in which we are going to finish this war is the question I know we've got a fixer at the minute the question is how do we how do we 
what do we tell them to do? Do we tell them we want them killed, or we tell them we want them sending away, like to jail? Uh, well, I think like he's talking about Krabstitch. Yeah. Because he's mainly like destroying evidence, intimidating witnesses, that kind of thing. I don't. Oh, we could yeah. do a setup then. We could do a setup. Yeah. Like we could set them up for something. Like even. Um... Yeah, like a setup. What would be incriminating enough to, to send him away for a long time? I uh, I've got an idea. So obviously we've got quite a lot of high society um, clients, haven't we? Not clients, um, contacts. We do. Yeah. Could we convince one of those to give us like a personal? effect or even you know so we could plant it somewhere uh, hmm. you trying to frame the vultures we're trying, we're trying to find the vultures brick, basically, yeah. So, um... Interesting. I like it. That is the idea. <laughs> we could just... Could we just pay the water rats to try and do it? I mean, they're both, like... <laughs> the water rats t- tier zero, still. No, tier one. Okay, they're both tier one. Could just risk it and get the water rats to kill him. I think we should probably set up a meeting with the water rats because either way, you know, we're kind of helping each other, and we could probably. Um... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we want the war over, and then we could like say to them, their part is. That they can have their whole smuggling operation. We don't really care about that. That's not our, our deal. Like, yeah. we just want the war over and um, it's bad for business. So we can maybe discuss with them to see whether they've got any um, inside information, you know, from their, from them sneaking in or, like, even how they, they'd like to do it. Like, if they want to take over their, op- you know, basically enlist some help from them, maybe. And then we'll say... Once we get the vultures out of the way, we'll um, allow you to to have their to have their base or their 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 operation. Yeah, that's their payment for helping us out, really. Yeah. I mean, we know the water rats are sneaky, so surely they'd be able to smuggle something in, or like you know, get in there without being seen. Yeah, we could possibly coordinate with the water rats to attack them on two fronts. Yeah. Something like that. But I mean, just going off like what happened when we tried to attack them before, I, I don't know, I just don't feel like, like a full frontal assault or like, you know, even like a sneak attack is, yeah. is really our style or something we could deal with. Like, I mean, if the plan worked out like before, you know, it would have been fine. But like, I don't think we'd use the same uh, technique to do to do it again. Yeah necessarily I think I don't know I'd, I'd, I just feel like it'd probably be easier for us to just like either pay someone to, to do it or uh, we can even like talk to Krabs did it Skidditch and like see if he's got any ideas to see um, you know if he knows if he can dig some dirt on on Thingy and on um, the leader of the Vultures Scope, Scope. Um, Whaler. and Whaler and see if they've got any uh I don't know, like pressure points, or even get like a private investigator or something like that to, to do it for us. I think we need more information, personally. We don't know enough about Scope of Whaler to to know um, the best way to manipulate the situation, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, th- I, th- I think we still probably do need to get reduce some heat, so you might as well do that. Yeah, I'm going to reduce some heat. Um... By shifting it onto the um, 
by onto the vultures, ideally. I'm going to talk to Crofts Crofts Ditch. Crofts Ditch, yeah. Crofts Ditch. Like, whatever you want to call him, he's your mate, he doesn't care. <laughs> and I'm going to, like... I'm going to act all, like... Um, it's a it's a travesty all the all the drugs going around in in Silkshore. Have you heard this this new thing? This this recall. Yeah. Uh, and I want to like I, I want them to be. I, I, but you know they they they're good. They're sneaky. They. I want to take them down and. So an interesting point with Doctor Uriel. He hates drugs. Good. He hates them. Excellent. Um, he is one of a couple of people you you learn from the Central League Club who petitions quite frequently to magistrates for like bad and illicit products, and he's heavily involved in it. Oh yeah, this is totally why I'm going to lean on him for this. Yeah, he doesn't, of course, your background. No, nope. but he uh, so you get extra dice. Yeah, but basically, I'm basically I'm going to tell him about recall, but yeah. I'm going to like frame it in the way that the vultures have made this. This yeah. is this is entirely the vultures doing. How would you? How, dare how would you tell him that you know about it? Like that, like. Do you, do you tell them that you live in Crow's Foot? Like, what do you do? Like, what do you reveal? How do you know? I'll say, I'll say them in, in, in it's Silkshaw that the... the oh, well, you gamble. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that is where they are selling it. Yes, correct. That's where, that's where, that's where they're selling it. And I'll just say, oh, it's just down the road from me. It's disgusting. All these people yeah. in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, and, and you know, Krabs get it's just like, absolutely awful. Yes, I completely agree. Disgusting, disgusting business. Disgusting, vile, vile, vile people. Animals, animals, a lot of them. Mm. Yeah. So These are the people I, throw, I know are behind it. How do you know this? Uh, research, research of my book. Yeah, awful, awful stuff. I guess Mr. Rice's burden is to venture into the worst parts of society and expose them for what they are and shine a light upon it. Quite. So, Some uh, days I wish I could do something about it. Oh, well. <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> so what action I think taken? I think this is a sway. This sway. is definitely a sway. This You're going to sway console. him to... Use his contacts. Yeah, reduce heat on us. Yeah, raise heat. On Use him as the middleman. You can't go to the Blue Cross Direct and go, "Hey, these guys." Yeah. You're going to give him enough info that he can do that for you. Yeah, sounds good. Reduce heat on us. Raise heat on us. We get extra one die for this because it's <coughs> his connect, cross stitch. His connections and help will be able to keep, we'll set you up for this way nicely. Excellent. Okay, so that's three dice sway. Yes, three dice sway. Oops. Four, four, three. Four, four, three. So you reduce heat by two. Reduce heat by two. Uh, it's not much, but it'll do. Blue coats definitely shift some of their attention. Can we pay a rep to bring it up for two? You can do a, 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 a oh a no, coin? I don't think you can actually do that. I think rep is fractions. It's a coin specifically, I think, to increase the effectiveness. So a six is three ticks, isn't it? A five, and yes, and the um, another one, a crit is five. So could I, I mean could we use a rep to like lean on him some more and do um, it again? Do it again, but yeah. Yeah, it's specifically coin is the increase, but you can definitely use a rep to do it again. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so you have three. You have three. You have one each action for, and you have two because you have yeah. But you can give the other one away. So you have three, 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 three actions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it again. I will do. I'll do it gonna, again. I think uh, we usually get like four heat, like three heat. You know. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'll, I'll do it again. I just I don't really want to do it in the same way. So I think what I will do is I will offer to be his. Um, uh, I'll offer to get him information on people in the area because obviously that's, that's around near where I live. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to do right with your right persona. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's probably going to be a study to try and find information on them to give to him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you are a scoundrel. You know yeah. the area well. You can absolutely do that. You would know the place. Look, and in fact, you've been there. You've been to one of their drug dens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a study. Cool. One dice. Five. Five. So that is two more t- Two more down. Uh, yep. That's a bit better. That'll do for now. Nice. Keeps you out of jail for a bit anyway. <laughs> Maybe. is definitely telling people that... Uh, that you know, no, it's not... It's not, it's not, it's not it's, you're looking in Crow's Fort? No, it's in Silkshaw. Have you heard? It's in Silkshaw. Yeah. I think my family are back here. When did I send them off? Oh, what, what is the date anyway? The, the party yeah. was on the, the first, first of Gold Moon, Moon, so Gold we're picking up the day after. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> Which is home day in Silk day. Crow's Fort. Which is an interesting proposition because home day in Crow's Fort is traditionally, it's one of the days in the month, week and in the month when a lot of the criminals are released and come back to Crow's Fort. So all the ranks of all the gangs are about to swell. True. 
A lot of them are coming, leaving the battlefield of prison behind to re-enter the battlefield of Crow's Force. A lot of bells, the crematorium bells have been ringing an awful lot recently. With each bullet and each knife thrust, the bells ring. I feel, I feel like um, the Silken Noose probably got some like some armor on the windows. Yeah. One little sign says, "We're still open." <laughs> <laughs> like plywood, or like painting on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. that light outside, and just flickering but never going off. Yeah. Close the shutters, definitely. I think. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. How will they know we're open? What a little sign. <laughs> I think. So it's two thousand actions done. You've got done. Yeah, some action if you I'll do. reduce some stress. Reduce some stress, and then let us see your family. Yeah. Or shall I? I mean, yes. Oh, yeah, I know, but I still want to. Yes. Tra- I want to trauma a little bit, though. Um. <laughs> I mean, if you do want to get one, like, you can always just take death. You can always make trade position for effects. <laughs> True, yeah. So you can always go down, like, loads of desperate route, like, and just stretch yourself out. Like, it's I've, got, I've got an interesting angle which I might want to pursue. Because, mm. I mean, this is Thaddeus thinking out loud, but, yeah. like, so he went to the party, he met yeah. Orth after all this time. He did. Visually affected by it, mentally affected by it. How does know. Thaddeus feel with Orth doing so well? I mean, I know he's, like, his, his reputation has been gone down, but Orth is still so well off. Oh, I mean, it was apparent from like his actions at the party. You yeah, know, they were they weren't optimal by any sort of like description of the word. Yeah. But like, yeah, he's he's. I think it's laser focused his sights yeah. even more, like on basically trying to ruin this guy's life because <laughs> um, he feels like the only reason he's in this position now, like uh, Thaddeus, is because of this guy. Like yeah. he'd, he'd be swinging it with the big the big leagues um, if it wasn't for him and he'd, if he didn't mess him over mm. but also there's like an interesting I guess not not a, a side plot but it's it, it's sort of Thaddeus is starting to think so Horth has fucked him over he worked with him for years mm-hmm. you know the gang's doing well now and obviously it's, it's me and Merrick together so he started. He's, he's got like that kernel of doubt in his in his mind that yeah. like, you know it's happened before and he, he never wants it to happen again. Yeah. So he's he's. I think he's <laughs> not starting to think like badly of of Merrick, but perhaps like he'd like a way to have something against him in case like he did decide to. <laughs> That's the reaction him. then. It was I'm, amazing. Sorry, go on. If he did decide to like screw him over, then he'd so, have a, a Joker, Joker in the pack, basically. That this has been fucked over by a friend before. Someone he considered a friend before yeah. has fucked him over. Yeah. By the language. And just have it, just um, Horth coming back into his life has yeah. sort of like seeded that kernel of doubt in his brain again. Yeah. In terms of, you know, if it's happened once, it's going to happen again. Did he get a little paranoid? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a little paranoid. He, he is. I think that I think that is narratively like it makes sense. And yeah, I think it's brilliant. Maybe in the next few weeks he might start acting on it. Or maybe try to dig up some dirt on Merrick's past. I don't, I, I don't know. I feel like Merrick would probably be unconsciously contributing to this as well. Yeah, <laughs> like putting you put like putting you in like right. We've just seen wireless electricity. You can make that right. I mean, you can a, do that right. Yeah, a, there, you can't. What's the point of you? There's, there's, there's a few. <laughs> there's a few things as well. Like you know, with like the double clocking of the book. Sorry, double cooking of the books. Yeah, stuff like like is Thaddeus is like. Well, you know, he's not really told him about it, but it's happened anyway, and it's sort of like, he doesn't like to be out of the loop, and it's sort of like a bit, it's not backhanded, but it's something that needed to happen, but it's still a bit like, yeah, I don't know, like a little, a little bit shifty, but, mm. I don't know, that, that kernel's, kernel of doubt is there, it doesn't want it, it doesn't want it to happen to him again, especially as we, we gained a bit of money and a bit of uh, status in the criminal underworld. But anyway, I'm going to relieve some stress. Okay. So, um, I don't think my my family will be back today. I can't. I can't. Um, you can also send them away to keep like, keep keep them there longer if you want. I might do depending on what happens in this session, but mm. like um, I think they are probably still uh, still away. So mm. I think that's it was a couple of weeks in the way for. Yeah, I reached out to Melissa and my sister in law before, but she didn't really want anything to do with. It was a uh, husband who didn't want anything uh, yeah, more. Suppose, like Tana. Yeah. But um, she wrote you a letter and she said like, "Let's start slow." Yeah. You know, because we've not really engaged before. Let's, you know talk and we'll and we'll yeah. start to develop relationships with family yeah I think I think what Thaddeus would do then would be to write letters to um, Melissa and to his his family okay. who are currently in the Melissa as well. okay cool yeah so just 
Um, yeah, general, general that. I think. So you've received the letter from your family. You do get one from your wife saying that you know they're enjoying this time. You know, we share in Imperial City. She hopes you're well. You know, we, they miss you. The children miss you. Um, but it, they are also have been excited. You know, to see the palaces of the of the emperor and you know all the things that Duskwall has. The Imperial has ten times over. You yeah. Know? Duskwall is one of the most important cities in the world, just because of its location, proximity to the Leviathan processing, and it's, it's literally the center of the empire. It's like the New York to Washington, D.C. Yeah. You know, it's New York, Washington, D.C. is still the capital, so got all the politics and stuff there, but Duskwall is Duskwall, New York is right. New York, you know. Um, okay, yeah. So, I mean, I think what Thaddeus does at home is, like, cook himself, like, he doesn't know how to cook, but, like, you know, get himself a meal, he'll, he'll put out the placeholders for his yeah. wife and, like, his, his son and his daughter and sit down and, uh, like, have a meal and write this letter while he's while he's eating, I think. Yeah. So, uh, three dice. Stress relief. I got a crit. Oh! Oh, nice, no way. So, I don't know what that does in this case. Can you crit on stress relief? That's critical stress relief. Can you? This we've never had this before. You can, can you crit on? I hope stress you don't get seven because I'll overindulge. <laughs> so you've definitely, you've definitely got six. I think you just clear it all. <laughs> yeah, you've definitely got six. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Thaddeus well, is enjoying. Six. Thaddeus is enjoying his family while they're not here, <laughs> like more than more than when they are here. Clear stress no, equal to the highest diameter. Can't. Oh. I don't think you can crit. You can't crit, it's no. just a six. Yeah. What a waste. Oh, what a waste of a crit! Do you want to do you want a crit? It doesn't matter. Okay. I mean clear it. Did you have six? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, like I said, Thaddeus is enjoying it more when his family's not there. <laughs> like in terms of stress relief. It may be part of the stress relief the fact that he knows they're safe. Yeah, yeah. No, that that makes sense. Especially as things are massively heating up in Crow's Foot mm. in terms of the, the conflict. It's interesting you mentioned that. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Another knock on the door? <laughs> Not quite. Where are you, Merrick? <clears throat> uh, I am probably tending to things in such I'm probably at Greasy Joe's. You ever had a bag over your head? Not recently. You have now. Both okay. of you, both of you. So, as you leave your home, yeah. and as you leave Greasy Joe's, yeah. you don't realise this, but a similar time across the city, yeah. um, in a moment, Thaddeus, like, you would, one minute you're walking down the street to a familiar street of your home, the next second is a, a black sack cloth hood is pulled over your head, your hands are grabbed from behind, and the strength and rough and tumble of a superior, the st- superior strength of rough, tumble, rough, rough men yeah. push you, what you really like, quickly into a carriage and bind you ever so quickly. Okay. Before you have a moment to scream or think, you're in the carriage and the carriage is moving. You feel a boot pressed against you. Once you kind of stop struggling to do, you're picked up roughly and sat down. You're not mistreated, you're not hurt. You're just firmly secured. Yeah. Exact same for you, Merrick. As you leave, you can guess one of the silver stag or Greasy sorry, Greasy Joes. It's as you get near Crow's foot, a carriage pulls up, you walk along and you kind of move and go, nearly hit me. It pulls in front of you, two men come out dressed in dark clothes, black, you've not seen before, and before we can react, you have that gut instinct of, they're coming for me, and as you reach for a weapon, not with your sword cane, you go to draw yeah, it, okay. immediately someone behind you puts a bag over your head, you feel a punch go into your gut, knocks the breath out, and you are also tumbled into the carriage. Minutes pass. Left, right. Eventually, the carriage slows. It starts to hit rough cobblestones. The noise and smells. You think you are in Crow's foot. You're not sure where. You're taken out. You both feel this. You're taken up stairs. More stairs. More stairs. Several flights. Before eventually, you're sat down at a table and the bag is removed. Sitting at one end of the table, her feet crossed, resting on it, like she is the fucking queen of the world, is Lissa. 
Next to her right is my layer of clev. There's a strange looking package in the middle of the table near her. Closer to her, it's a long table, closer to her than you, but between you. My layer of clev is the Scotlandish. No, no, she's the leader of the Red Sashes. She's, oh, she's the leader of the Red Sashes. Sorry, yeah. She's sitting there in a long, red my layer of clev, in a long sleeve, which is rare for her. I'm trying to tie you off. A red coat, and you can see the black, uh, the black vest underneath it, where you can see her neck. They've got the tribal tattoos on it. Lissa wears the traditional garb of the crows, which is dark clothing with a few feathers stuck in at the, the leather pauldron they seem to wear. She is a mixture of youth, some weird kind of beauty, if it wasn't for the scar across her face, and bristling with weapons. You see two pistols tucked in what you can see. You see a blade in a, a sheath on her wrist and a couple of the glints of metal on her person. This looks like a kind of person who's just ready for war or all opportunity. And the sense you get from her is that while she seems to be feet up at rest and she's smoking a cigar, is this unbridled, this strength, this, this coiled snake vibe of at any moment she could leap across that table and pounce. She looks at rest, but you don't think for one second that that wiry strength in, in her muscles isn't harnessed rage. Are we the only four in the room? No. Darius isn't? Oh. Darius is indeed there, and sat next to him is Hemlock. And you realise now there is an uncanny resemblance between Hemlock and Darius. They are both Aruvian, they could indeed be brothers. Darius is my, my Lyra's second in command? Yes, he yeah. is a sort of master of the school. Hemlock sits there, his bowl hat and tail in front of him. Does the architecture look, are we in... Would you like to take a roll to see where you are? I is certainly it? will. <laughs> I will survey the architecture to it see if it's very It will be controlled, because they're not going to interrupt you doing this standard. To see if you can work out where you are. Yeah, bag off head, just look around. Yeah. There's a five. There's a five. It takes you a few minutes longer and you hear a smirk. You're not sure who from. Come from behind you. And you actually look around, there are several of the crows stood in the room. You must be quite high ranking to be here. You're in the crow's nest. Oh, not the Red Sash Academy. No, the crow's nest is the uh, Melissa's tower in Crow's Fort. It's a four-story tall building. It overlooks a lot of the area. Um, no one quite knows who built or when, but it's what they took over as their base, their operations. As the bag's taken off Thaddeus' head, yeah. he goes, what the fuck was in that bag? St stinks like shit in there. And then, look, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like all these crows around. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, looking at looking around, there's, there's crow um, henchmen as well there? Yeah, several, um, several in the room. Can I ask you, um, are any of them hooked on, on recall? Are any of them hooked on recall? Mm. That is an excellent question. No, not from what you see. You've seen crows, but you've never seen these four. You'd imagine the ones in this room to be this close to two gang leaders are either extremely trustworthy and probably extremely loyal to be this close. Yep. Okay. Yes. I will... And my, my Lyra hasn't got the itches after her uh, hit with, with, with recall. No, she practices okay. a lot of the uh, empty mind techniques. Okay. And to try to send up the spirit amongst the body. Okay. That's how she's got where she is. I'm going to say, um, you could have sent a letter, you know, to what do we owe the pleasure? Mrs. Legs come down and she turns and puts her elbows on the table. We're going to have to address you. The tables are long, beautifully carved with them one. Are we bound? No, you are released. Okay. Yeah, drinks placed in front of you. And you see several cabinets in the room. This looks more like a war room. You've seen these kind of rooms before than any kind of lounge area. Yeah. It's probably it could seat 12, this table. There's also a map of the city on the wall with several points marked on it. Pins, maps, and several weapons, and a dagger in typical fashion stuck into it as well. I'll um, I'll pick up the drink, yep. and, I'll, and I'll study it. It's just water. And I'll go, well, if you were going to kill us, you would have done it already, mm -hmm. and, I'll, and I'll knock, knock it back. Spit some on the floor. Infallible logic. So, Lissa regards you two both. You're not, so Lissa's at the end of the table, and to her right is Mylera. Darius. Hemlock sits on the other side up with Darius. 
you guys sit not at the end of the table, like, at the end of the table, but not at the head. You know, you are two opposite each other. So Larissa looks at both of you, and she turns to face you as if she's settling down to business. It's around the table. It's no secret, is it? What's going on in Crow's foot right now? As you're looking at that, you get a full view of this woman. She's got like a half-open shirt kind of thing. Not like open arm, but just kind of half-worn. That scar across her eye cuts real deep into her flesh. But you get a sense, you can see a kind of bandage underneath where she's likely been wounded. You can see that she definitely was. And there's a small bit of a wind, so she kind of leans on her elbow. What, the fighting? Kind of hard to avoid. Yeah, somehow you have. Do you know what happens if you keep hopping the fence? Oh, we've got a war of our own. You're getting paled on it. The strange uh, humming noise coming from that box in the middle of the room. Very faint, very faint. So when you only hear it, it goes to that, into absolute silence. Thought it was a rat beacon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, uh, the vultures will come to them in a moment. I assume this is a diplomatic meeting, then. She smiles at that. Kind of stubs the cigar out. It smells like absolute dung when she stubs it out. It stinks. I'll look. I'll look. You look at her now, she's probably about 25. She's way younger than you thought. Way younger. Like, you know, listen, you probably thought it was in the 30s, what you've seen of, like, pictures and stuff. But she's far younger in person you've ever seen the picture. She is not that photo. She's not unpretty. She's quite pretty. In fact, she's got this shock of white hair. Like, it's platinum white. And you don't know if that's just bleach. Because some people have it in the city from working with ectoplasm. It can, mm. you know, it can literally bleach your hair out. So if she hasn't worked with it, most likely one of her family has, like a father or mother at some point. A lot of nobles have it from being around electricity, you know, and, and especially it's part of a genetic thing with the nobles that yeah. they were around it when it was raw, and now it's it's a lot safer, but it's put into the. So is it a shock from a tech? No, the whole lot is white. Oh, it's all white. Yeah, right. like platinum white, like almost like silver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but she is way younger than you thought. Dark set eyes. One is green, one is blue. I'll uh, I'll address Hemlock and go, Hemlock. I didn't take you for a crow. All that's missing is the feathers on your shoulder. And he's writing a letter or, or something at the moment. He's writing some reports. He, with that, he looks up at you and raises one eyebrow. Oh, Mr. Clinker, your wit never fails to impress. And he goes back to school. <laughs> Seriously, though, what's he doing here? Lissa looks at him and looks back at you. He's here to make sure our conversation is recorded with due accuracy. So... I hear the vultures are selling your product rather cheaply. What's it like having something of yours taken from you? Well, we don't like it. No. Not a very nice feeling, is it? Like a violation. A betrayal of trust. Well, what, what are you getting at? We haven't taken anything from you. Did I say you have? Look. I'm just reading in between the lines. It's just an interesting thought that your first place your logic jumps to is you've stolen something. One might say you have a guilty conscience. Have you stolen something from me? What has Bajo stolen from you? She kind of just gestures to the window. Nothing. But he's trying to. I give him peace. I give him terms. Why do you want to work for someone who cannot keep their word? I know you sold product for him, and that is fine. I have no problem with that. You're a business. You're making a business arrangement. So I come to you with a new arrangement. You always paid on time, more or less. I'm also aware you were unwittingly paying Bell for a while, but since then you've paid and kept up the funds so this war may continue, but I want it to end. And then her face kind of drops into a serious status and I want it to end soon, so we can all get back to making money. Here's what I propose. And now one of the crows brings the sports dagger and pulls puts the map in the city, of the city improper. Impro- 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 
we will divide Crow's Thorpe into three pe pieces as it was before this nonsense happened. She looks to my Lara Clare, who's been silent the entire time. My Lara, you will take the area surrounding your academy and start drawing out lines. You have the inspectors, you see in fact the hemlock next to her, and your connections in the Arubian consulate. The politics of the city, of the district, and keeping our business quiet and out of the law enforcement's prying eyes will be yours. We will take the streets. We will run the protection rackets, the gambling, and the smuggling and income and export operations with our friends. You may take the vice. Whatever the Lamp Blacks have, you know they run drug dens. You can have them in turn. If you agree to my terms. I expect, of course, due and proper payment for these leasing of these products and venues. But you'll make far more money working for me than you will against me. And as regards to Sugs, you the other area as well. The water rats are helping Vajo, but the also know the water rats are helping you. I know who their leader is. So I can apply pressure where needed. So, something to think about there. She's got this predatory grin. And just in the middle of the room now, again, when it goes silent, just that weird mmm from the box. And what are your terms? What do you want us to do? I want you to kill Bajo. Jesus Christ. We sell drugs, we don't do killing. I know. Or at least, not all the time. I know. That's why I'm offering you his drug den, because you are not killers, but necessity proves to make murderers of us, of, of us all because you have a set of skills and in with him I want to use. He likes you, he trusts you from what I've heard. So I want you to make an arrangement with him. I want you to make a meeting with him and I want you to kill him. And you're going to do it in a very specific way so that a message is sent and you'll kill so many of the lamp blacks that they'll have no hope of recovery. And in their place, the Blackwater Exchange will emerge like a phoenix from the ashes of the Lamp Blacks. It has to be you for this way to work. Mm. And as you guys are sitting there thinking, gestures from the crows. <laughs> And he picks up the box and pulls the lid off. Thaddeus, it's been a long time since you've seen something like this. It's a bomb. Highly illegal. Extremely rare. So you get the materials, the electroplasm, and the gunpowder to make a bomb. But Lissa's has got a bomb. One that would probably level a good few buildings in one go. How powerful is it? It'd level off your buildings in one go. Or say... Do they know that? You don't know, but she's certainly got Sorry, that's what I'm asking. Oh, you're asking her? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're asking her how yeah, powerful yeah, yeah. it is? She goes, I have uh, the right contacts in the right places. The Hemlock car looks at it, looks back down, keep making notes, and he seems to be recording a lot of the conversation, like he's transcribing it. Can I do a study roll to see? Certainly, of course, yeah. How powerful I, I would have thought it Do you want to go up and look at it? I'll I what, as Alyssa sees you looking at it, she kind of pushes it towards you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Control good. standard. <clears throat> a three. Three. Um, you're not one hundred percent sure, simply because you've not seen the construction like, but it it's looks big. dangerous. Yes. Something like that has not been seen in Dusk One. No, not, not of like military grade explosion. That has not been seen in Dusk One. So you want us to set up a meeting, mm. get this bomb yeah. inside Barjo's office. How big is it? Got a package. Okay. And hopefully not blow ourselves to smithereens in the process. You got it. Why do we need a meeting? I mean, 
Who's going to take a buzzing box? I'm sure we need to work out the details. I thought you were in the war. I've heard reports you were a soldier. And she kind of looks at Hemlock like that. Yeah. I've seen your file. Demolitions. Electroplasm experience. You were built for this, Thaddeus. You were made for this. Surely as a man, if nothing else, you'd want to see this device reaches proper potential. Surely your skills are, if they are what I've heard them to be, you can do this. This is. So you're saying to me, the best thing for Crow's foot is to blow half of it up? Jesus. This yes. is mad. This is mad. I mean, yeah, we'll do it. It must never be public knowledge that it was us. And then she kind of looks at Harvey. Sorry, the um, Hemlock. And Hemlock looks at her and looks at you guys. The Crow's Fort, Hemlock speaking, run a coal warehouse. The dust is very fine. And you realise that now, Hemlock's probably got military experience from the way he's talking. The item we have here is an incendiary device. will ignite, as well as it makes its own explosion, will also ignite the powder and create a much larger explosion than would be normal. The uh, technology behind this could actually come from some of these Scovland dust explosions where, for lack of a better phrase, shit farming techniques resulted in catastrophic explosions. It leveled the building and all didn't it? I doubt any gang would come back from that. Of course, it will also send a great message. It will be blamed on the grinders, who I know you have no love for, and they revolutionary acts. Good. And what will you do about the vultures? Yeah, who are you asking me? Listen, sir. I'll leave you to do this, which you wish. But we need them sorted out. I'll yeah, take care of them then. How do you expect us to set, set, up, set up this thing while we're at war with them? Well, I need to finish to, we need to sort out our own house before we do something like this. Mm, I agree. Seems like a fair proposition. proposition. And is he, is he sorting out the blue coats? I mean, this thing's going to draw a lot of them once it goes out. Mm. A lot of eyes. Mm. A lot of investigations. Mm. And is, is he sorting everything out on that end? Mm. Well, do you really think I would have something like this done if I didn't have a way? Oh, if you had a fall guy like us, yeah, to take the fall. Not very trusting, are you? First, your mind jumps to that you've stolen something, and now you are the. No, I, my mind jumped to the insinuation. Mm. I, if I laid the blank with and you ate it, is that my fault? I see why you're like the mouthpiece of it. Bro. She kind of leans back and now we get another cigar out. We have your word on this deal. What is that worth? Do you know who the fuck I am? Asked you a question. I do. Mm. So what more do you need? Mm. <laughs> it's just like these little lights blink at it. Back in the box. <clears throat> I think. I think. Um, I, I kind of look at Thaddeus and be like, like, because um, I don't, I don't really know anything about the bomb or how powerful it be or how difficult it be to set up or rig or anything like that. So, but I'm totally for it. <laughs> Thaddeus is looking at you like, um, like nodding and going. 
I mean, he, he feels like the only way we're getting, we might even get out of here alive, is, is, is accepting to do the job. That's how he's looking at you. That's why he, he readily accepted it. But. We accept your generous offer. Mm. Let's talk terms. You get half the district and you want to talk terms. <laughs> well, just like that. I like you. I like you, always thinking of the profit, the money. I like that. Yeah. Let's talk terms. She like kind of leans over the map and starts pointing out like major vice locations. Yeah. Of course you get paid for this. Some startup capital to get your business off the ground. All of which over time of course will go straight back to you. And of course in the meantime you make a lot more money. There's a bounty for Barjo and Bell. You'll get it. What is that bounty? 12 coin. Well then. There is coin to be made. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I've got such a good idea. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I don't know, you probably won't like it. My, my layer of clothes like. Well then, I believe the. This is what you wish. I believe we can come to some kind of arrangement. I'm happy to maintain the politics and the brother of my own brother, which is just as damn well. <coughs> and our friends in the European consulate will make sure that any political sway in Bakwash Heat is directed elsewhere. So we may continue to run operations unimpeded. My Lara, you will be taking the protection rackets and if you are taking the advice markets of course we will maintain some of our own the ones in our immediate vicinity we of course like to diversify and offer those of our students and patrons the chance to experience the recession of course but we have our own in-house products which I do not believe our markets will cross hmm. and we can get back to making money as it was when Ronick was alive rather than this god forsaken war which is Causing all kinds of trouble and then killed in the streets. Nasty business. Nasty business indeed. I may mean, not see eye to eye, but I'm the enemy of my enemy is my friend, no? Quite. You're looking now, you think Darius and Hellock are related. Right. It makes sense why Bajor got arrested. <laughs> so, what do you want to do? Uh, I don't know. Um, I've, got <laughs> such, I've got such a funny idea, Dan. What is your funny idea? It's something that Daddies would definitely propose. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm done with the meeting. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm happy with, with what, what we talked about. I, I, I mean, are all gang members going to be down with no. Killing. That's why I like, said it could not be public knowledge. That's the reason. <laughs> but like, would they be down with blowing up the Red Sashes Academy? Still in gross foot. Yeah, but they're dirty Eruvians. <laughs> I don't think they'd care. I am hurt. <laughs> All that we need to do <laughs> is. Right, it, it's, it's actually laid out as a counter plan. Go to Barjo. <laughs> like, once we get the bomb, go to Barjo Baz. We've got the Red Sash blueprints. We we know he's working with the water rats. We know they can get oh, stuff in. Shit. Get the bomb inside the red sash temple and blow it. Sorry, the red sash academy and blow it up. That that is the idea which Thaddeus will propose to you because he does not feel he likes Barjo for one. That's one thing. I don't think he'd have massive qualms about killing him if. We're just... talking about a third of Crow's foot here. Oh, we need to make sure that. Bajo... Wouldn't you rather have half of Crow's foot if we go go in it with? If, uh, if the same Baz. offer is open for Bajo Baz, then absolutely. It's a better offer. We'd get half of it. You don't think he would reward us for for telling telling their plan? I mean, Jesus Christ! The, I mean, the heat we'll get from the blue coats would be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. 
It's okay. It's okay. You broke. You broke. You broke, you broke Thaddeus. Lisa broke Thaddeus. Because <laughs> she's got a bomb. Yeah. Let's just do it. A, a device of enormous yeah. mayhem and magnitude is... Let's, let's just use the bomb um, to kill the vultures, yeah? And leech it. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> use like a sledgehammer to crack the wall. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we broke Thaddeus. Where's the... Um, oh, where is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so... I don't know what to do. I... I, I can't... I... Wouldn't I really th- like that, but we just need to make sure Close that the no, other Our chemicals, measure. bombs, and dangerous gadgets are highly restricted. Highly restricted. Highly restricted. Not not highly, highly restricted. Just highly restricted. <laughs> Massively illegal. <laughs> I just uh, Oh god. <laughs> Bajo's plus It'd be so plus funny. Lisa. Bajo's plus Lisa. She's got a bomb. She's got a bomb. The question is, what do we do with this bomb? I mean, right, let's think it out. So we, we get the bomb. So, first of all, she says to you, if you, if you, if you agree to the terms, at least publicly. They yeah, we, we, say, we say we agree she to says, them. She says, because as, as per your suggestion, go sort your house out. Yeah. Make your arrangements with Baggio, and then we'll talk, and we'll get the bomb to you. And I want to base it, and she's like, I want to hear your plan. Yeah, yeah, we need go to... Go sort yourselves out. Plan. Yeah, we need to start... I don't this want any... Place. Unknown elements potentially risking this. I don't want you carrying a weapon like that. What? They're not just going to give us a bomb. No. What? <laughs> and then lack of trust when in this you've organization. Got a plan together, she's got it, but she wanted you to see it. She wanted you to know she wasn't bluffing. She wanted you to show you the kind of, oh. you know, in her mind at least, like look what I can do. How amazing would that be though? Like, like double crossing. It'd be... oh, I don't know. I really like. I really I, like. So the meeting is done. You are guys are let out, and you are offered a ride back to wherever you wish. In a nondescript black cab, which does not have the crow symbol. What the hell was that, Matt? <laughs> what, <was> that? <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm just like, I'm, it broke my brain. It, it really has. Like, I do not know what to do. It makes you feel better. It's not the entanglement. Oh, that's good. That's not. That, that's I told the... you, I got a lot of sixes tonight. <laughs> under that, on back, on the back <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to do some thinking about that. How good would it be, though, Dan? Imagine if we if we get the bomb. Like, we managed to swing it with, with Barjo Baz. We say that, you know, we set up this meeting, we tell this of what the plan is, and then the actual plan is to get this bomb under the Red Sash Temple or something like that. And, and I mean, the saying are all, like, locked down there at the minute. I, I, uh, it'd be difficult, but I guess how much damage would it do? It'd kill the Red Sashes, it wouldn't take out the Crows. But maybe that's where Barjo comes in. Like, could he take out the Crows at the same time? Now that the red sashes aren't aren't in the picture, I don't know. It'd be pretty funny though. I just don't. I don't know whether we'd be able to pull it, pull it off. I think. I think it makes. But it's I, like I it's, it's so. It's like either a third of crow's foot or a <laughs> half. of crow's foot. <laughs> Oh, that, that like, now we've got a graphical representation yeah, yeah. of what a third and a half. And now we understand. So, now you know what he's. You can't <laughs> even see <laughs> that. You can't even see it. Like. <laughs> It's a peace symbol. And that'd be our third, the, li- the smallest third. So, I think, yeah, we should go to Bajo and, like, offer to sign some information. Or... I don't think we do it now, this session, yeah, but yeah. it's definitely, I will think about we it. we got to finish the war first. we got to finish the war. we got to finish the war, but holy crap, that's, that's, an, that's an offer. That is an offer. Oh, we get 12 coin as well for killing, killing them both, so we'd need to mm. get at least 12 coin for killing... We'll see what he's offering because we can send that information. Yeah. We will see what he's offering. Okay. I imagine he will pay good money for information about this. For information this, like. Yeah. This valuable about Lissa. Um. But yeah. Do we. What Maybe do we want to do this session? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think. It's all better than war, right? Yeah. Let's set up a meeting with the Water Rats. Yeah. And see what they, whether they're willing to help. 
Yeah. Yeah, we do that. Just gonna pull the water racks up for you now. Cool. Yeah, just, just ready at least. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna do the meeting. If you want to do a meeting now, you can do it now. If you want to do the you, you've, yeah, you've done your down time. If you only free, I don't say so actually. Um, you used it. I, I, we'll say we'll give it to you. Oh right, I, I thought you'd wrap for that. Later. Uh, no, I didn't cross it off. Okay. I mean, we can do. We probably can do another rep. I, I was thinking of getting those red sash blueprints finished. That's no. We got tough. Yeah. Red sash blueprint finished. Yeah, that's probably an idea. Or. Um, yeah, right, that, I'm going to work on the red sash blueprints. Okay. So it's an interesting one now, because now you've got some of them, you are quite an intelligent person. Yeah. You can start working out now, you know, you can start making leaps of logic and assumptions. Yeah. You know, um, so what actions do you want to take to to increase your knowledge of the academy's layout and building? You know, um, do you want to find blueprints of construction? Do you want to construction? Is it possible to work with like an architect or like, yeah, absolutely. you know, in the city yeah, or, or even like hire a, I don't know. Yeah, I'll work with an ar architect. I'll, I'll get them in. I know the general layout and then maybe even, Yeah, look at who actually designed that building, and then maybe have a look at similar similar buildings. Yeah, Actually, sure. Like, is it, I'm guessing it's quite it's quite, quite old. old. Yeah, it's quite yeah. old. It's quite old. Oh, right, relatively, okay. relatively speaking, it's quite old. Um, they they've took it and like they might have renovated parts of it, but the guy who built it, you know, he's dead. It's a couple of centuries old. Yeah, but it, as like most dust wall is, it can't it can't grow any further. Yeah, um, it, it's a like it's a, it's a, like a bit like an English city in that it's always in constant state of repair. Right. Because yeah. it's always you know it's so old now and it can't expand, so it goes up. And all part of it goes down. Is it more similar to like Eruvian, but like buildings from Eruvia? Yeah, it, what is definitely. So you could try researching Eruvian architecture. It's it's yeah. it's it's a Acrosian building that's had Eruvian elements installed and changed or edited, kind of thing. You know, um, when when renovations and improvements or expansions have been made, like one of the wings, like the east the east wing, you can see definitely. Yeah. Um, was an expansion, and you can see they've tried to blend the up the old with the new. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll work with like either like an architect or like an Aruvian architect yeah. and, and try and try and piece together the, the sure, details. Sure, so actually, take that. Study, it's really cool. Yeah, so you bring him in, he looks at the plan, he starts telling you what he would make, what you draw, and you've got reference material. Absolutely, yep. yeah. One die, study. Three, three. three, one tick. One tick. Red sash blueprints. Tick. Yeah. That uh, clock's been there for a very long time. <laughs> From session. Yeah, you guys have like walked in there, you've <laughs> drunk with people, you've stole some like a layout map, you've got an architect in, you guys are doing everything. When you get it finished, you will have the absolute <laughs> layout nail because you've done it so many different ways to spray, like you've gone yeah. at every angle. Um, Would, um, so, did we use a rep or a coin for that one? It was a rep. A rep. You guys aren't working, your rep's decreasing, but you've, you know, obviously that'll go straight back up and do a job. Yeah. But yeah, the rep, dec the rep decreases because these guys are so busy doing <coughs> things now that you're not I'm not. out there early, not showing your face, you're not being criminals. That, that turf there would be good to get after minus two heat per score. Oh, hell yeah. After, after we finish this war. Yeah, that is, wow. <laughs> yeah, oh wow, yeah. Um... Cover operation. Cover operation, yeah. <laughs> we are a legitimate business operation. Oh, is that is that that is a turf, isn't it? Yeah, it's a turf. It's not, it's not a turf. It's just a like. It's a it's a thing you claim that you have the power. It doesn't count oh, as turf. Right, it doesn't yeah, count right, as like right, turf right. for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's 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 something it's you've got to hold. Yeah. So basically, what we do is the score is going. What cover operation do you, you know? How what score do you want to do to acquire that? Yes. You know. Uh, yeah, we'll set up a meeting with the water rat, so is is what we've yeah what we've previously said. Cool. So whenever you want to do it, we can do it. Yeah, do it now. Let's do it. Cool. So, Liz has told you she knows the leader of the water rats, and a lot of people know it isn't Dylan. Um, you've got Dylan Ryan. He's from the Dagger Isles. Now, most people from the Dagger Isles, you guys know this. Their surnames are incredibly hard to pronounce for people not from there, so the Acrosian them. So his name really isn't Ryan, but it's what he tells people. Yeah. Because basically, it's like it's a translation word. His actual name is, and I'm pronouncing it awfully because I don't speak the language myself, is O May Aurelian. May Aurelian. But he calls it Ryan, the translation is Ryan. But he's the lead smuggler, he's the face of the gang. Yeah. The leader of the Water Rats is known to be quite secluded. But he's the one 
that people interact with. His mate, his second in court, like, well, technically the third in the command, but, like, his first mate is Oren Skolgen, which is another, like, um, he's Leviathan, or actually Leviathan hunter. He's Scottish. Mm-hmm. But the main guy you'll be meeting with is Dylan. I would, um... During the meeting with Lissa and Malera, yeah. when they said get your get your house in order, mm. I'd have been like, "Well, we uh, uh, we need to finish our business with the vultures first. Mm. You say you know the leader of the water rats. Mm. That information would be most useful. Mm. I would like to sway. Yeah, sure. To try and get that information try. from yeah. her. Yeah, um, desperate standard. Desperate standard. Yeah, because she. Yeah, she. Yeah, she, that, that's a card she does not want to give. Screw it. You're, it. you're in her territory, on her <laughs> thing, you know, everything. Be in her opinion, like, she's <laughs> holding all the cards, and it's like, you want to know something that I had to earn? Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, sure, you can certainly ask. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Your funeral. I'll do it. That's going to be mean to you. Should you fail this? Everyone, you're already mean. You're gonna get mental damage if you like. <laughs> okay. ins- extremely insulted. Yeah. Desperate. Level three harm. Pride. Pride hurt. <laughs> Desperate, pride destroyed. Desperate sway. Yes, Chris. A desperate sway, Chris. A desperate sway, Chris. Oh my God. You got I'm marking my experience. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, desperate sway crit, man. Wow. Yes! <laughs> wow. How how do you sway it to that degree <laughs> that like you just wrap your mental <laughs> gymnastics to the point where she's like, yeah, I have to get you, don't I? Doesn't matter, there's no other way. Well, you already you, know it. Uh, Mary. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I know, but you really know it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to tell you because then you're just gonna say that. Right? Let's say it together on three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my Jeez. god, man, that's amazing. So, so, so. It goes to great effect. Yeah. It goes to great effect. So, is Merrick being the sly silver tongue, that's what I say a lot, more like golden tongue now, <laughs> Ibruvian spokesman that he is, <coughs> leading on everything he's got in his, in his power, his heritage, his connection to my layers, my collection to Hemlock. Everything he knows that he can use, he does. Come on, Hemlock, you know, we've worked with it, you know about me, you're not trustworthy, I need to know this. You want us to do these things. Like, I can't do this without the correct information. And even taking a bit of a firm stance for her, you've noticed that Melissa responded when you were like, I want pay or no, and that you have a bit of a defiance, a bit of pride about it. She seems to respond to that, and you go, No, I'm not doing this job without the information. And standing up for a little bit, so you know, <coughs> she definitely liked it. Mm. And a part of it respects it and play, you know, and respects the game and the ball it takes, especially after being bound kind of thing and brought to her that you're doing that. So she's like, You know what, okay. I'll do you one better. I'll give you. I'll give you his location. I'll give you who he is. I'll give you the lot, and let's see what you do with this information. So the leader of the water rats is Doctor Gun, G U double M. Doctor Gun. He operates a small practice in Coleridge. <coughs> he is not a revolutionary, but he tends to the downtrodden and wary. He's known to be a bit of a I don't say like a hero, but you know he's well respected in the local community. You know he's one that people have come to him with wounds and not you know or illnesses and not be able to pay, and he'll still tend to them. He's a beloved figure of the local community, and if he's the leader of the water rats and got no reason to disbelieve it, he's like wow, that's a big step from you know a local hospice doctor to <laughs> taking over. Gang a, leader. Yeah, gang leader, absolutely. Um, it kind of makes sense mm. because the water rats are known to be as like collection of misfits mm. and people with skills like they're not like you know there's nothing really links to them other than the fact that they're a little bit downtrodden you know they're not all from Coleridge they're not all from the Bagarat they're not all from any one area and it makes sense that yeah he's probably brought people together and he must have a bit of a force of personality to get these different work together <laughs> work together well um, for whatever reason he's got to start or whatever reason he had you got that crit man so yeah you know Dr. Gunn to lead of the water rats like I say, you know, he operates practice in Coleridge. You know exactly where it is. You've got his description, you know what he looks like. You get photographs of him. You get the whole works. You list tells you about him that um, apparently he's a very intelligent man. He's very cunning, but he's also quite daring. She tells you what she found out when you get all this from her is that um, when the blue coat lockdown was in place, 
he was struggling for supplies. A lot of it was getting either robbed or stolen at the checkpoints. Mm -hmm. So he got several smugglers to basically bring them in for him. Because he didn't want to see his patients get lost. At least tell me she's got a real heart this one. Bit of sentimentality. Bit of weakness. But it seemed to carry on from there. He's, he's, uh, he's carried on. So he looks unassuming. He wears... So he... Very thin face, quite a tall gentleman, um, half bald on top with like a bit of a kind of hair around the sides there. He wears small spectacles that hang on the bridge of his nose, he's got a moustache, clean shaven. Um, he always wears a kind of like a blue cravat, he wears like you know, a waistcoat. He looks like the part of a doctor, but you know, his, tie, his cravat and tie is a little ruffled, his sleeves are undone, he's always got gloves all hands a bit dirty. He's a man who, he's a doctor and he's got the appearance of one, but he gets his hands get stuck in, it's that appearance of, yeah, he tries to dress well, but his very physical work, the very nature of his work means that he has that appearance of someone who yeah. works with people from the streets. He's someone who is no stranger <coughs> to the rough way of rough and tumble of life. He's from the school of hard knocks. He went to mental school, but he's also got that kind of, you know, graduation. And that while he's unassuming, I don't think for one second he isn't coming and quick with a weapon. Mm -hmm. Because he obviously is. Dr. Gunn. Dr. Gunn. Okay. The hidden face behind the Laura. You know his birthday as well. So, um, given what I know of mm. the relationship between the inspectors and the bluecoats, mm. would I assume that the bluecoats have this information as well? No. Being that he's there. Okay. So, the bluecoats are there to serve and protect they patrol the streets they encourage this is very strange, as it says right in the book they encourage compliance with the law they capture offenders they're the ones who kick down doors they operate the prison they are hired by the commander of the watch and the commander of the watch is appointed by the council mm. so it's a lot of politics at blue Coast. the inspectors who are also known as the constables they investigate. They're the ones who investigate. They're the ones who present evidence to and issue and uh, sorry, who present evidence for warrants. So the magistrates issue the warrants. So the inspectors go to them, go and look. Here's the evidence I need. One, give me this. Give me the evidence I need. What I want mm -hmm. to arrest this guy, and then they would send the blue coats off. And the blue coats basically follow the orders. Like, I want to arrest this guy. Here's where he lives. Here's the details. Go get him for me. Um, and they're the ones who get the evidence ready for trial. They are appointed directly by the Lord Governor himself, who is appointed by the Emperor. So it literally goes emperor, appoints the Lord Governor. The Lord Governor is the one who individually hires the inspectors. Um, they are often foreigners with no close ties to Dusk Law. The fact that you now see Hemlock and Darius together probably isn't well known. Yeah. Because the idea that an inspector would have a relationship with the second in command of the Red Sashes mm -hmm. is probably quite frowned upon. Mm -hmm. But more than that, but you're, at the same time, you do know the Red Sashes' public image is of a sword school. They have ties to the consulate. The Arun consulate is very powerful, very politically powerful. So if anyone was going to have ties to the inspectors, it would be the Red Sashes. Yeah. But yeah. So it's like uh, the inspectors are like essentially detectives <coughs> and the blue coats are the street cops. So they're the ones who follow orders. They do kind of, you know, they do work together when they have to. But no, just because the inspectors have got the information does not mean the blue coats will be aware of it. Unless the inspectors wanted that um, Dr. Gunn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they... <laughs> Don't, they, they don't share notes. No. Basically. So if, you know, they want to arrest Dr. Gum, all he'd know is the blue coats turn up and arrest him. And if he was like, why are you arresting me? They'd be like, we got orders. Yeah. And then they'd get him in the hole and then one of the inspectors would walk in and go, I'm taking from here. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Blue coats are the muscle, inspectors are the brains. Cool. There's more to it than that, but that's the general overview. I think we should probably still arrange this meeting just with Dylan go through the public route but then we have that kind of ace up the sleeve if we need it of knowing yeah although would they take kindly to us revealing that we know who their boss is in the middle of the meeting probably not probably not but no, if, if it goes if it goes badly we can go directly to him or yeah yeah something like that. all I'm saying is don't tell them that we know who their boss no, is no no <laughs> so we know no sorry no no <laughs> Okay, so you do. Uh, he meets you at the Old Forge Tavern where you've been a couple times about to meet Old Iron Boss, Old Iron Pawns HQ. The fact that Dylan's drinking there either means like either Old isn't aware of it or they must have some kind of relationship to allow him to be there without any issue. Yeah. Can't see why they would. Old 
fine bore and operates, you know, the streets, yeah. more rats <coughs> on the canals. Probably worth it quite well. Um, so when you first meet him, you meet Dylan. He's a tall and striking looking fella. Um, probably mid to late 30s, probably same age as Thaddeus. He's got um, dirty blonde hair, which he wears with quite a sharp parting, so it's kind of got like a little bit of cut, you know, left cut, sort of across to the right. Um, probably a little bit too much product in there, whether it's oil or slick or just grease and sweat, you're not sure, but it's kind of got his sweat back. Um, real sharp trim on the sides, clean shaven. Yeah, you sit and he's kind of just nursing. He look and he's just nursing a drink, and he just looks like any other fella you'd meet in Cor- uh, Coleridge. A mm. little bit ashen faced, a bit of soot there. Quite well built, stocky. Years of physical work definitely shown his frame. Just a plain white shirt, sleeves rolled up. No major tattoos, no major markings. It's got like a snake or something on one of it, but nothing untoward or unusual. Maybe some kind of like sea monster. I could tell it's kind of faded over time. Sit down. I want to. I, I want to shake his hand and congratulate him for his uh, recent acquisition. Uh, it takes your grip. It's a strong grip, real firm, real firm. Like, thank you. You it's may good. you may know of our relationship with the party in question. Well, uh, we took the information you guys give us. Had the locker for a couple of days and uh, seemed decent, so we followed up on it. What did you get in the end? Uh, you had the rumours, drugs, guns, money, women, oh, there was all, all of it. Sorts of so, uh, yeah, apparently you got 99 spirits in a bottle and bottled lightning in the works. Mm. Nothing too fancy, just the uh, troops a bit more boring, I'm sorry to say, but it was mostly just goods. But you know, street value's alright, we sell it. If you're here for a couple of lads, I'm telling you, not getting one, we did the other work ourselves. You had that information, but I know why you did it, and you got your own benefit out of that. Of course. No, we're not here for a cut. Mm. We're here to propose an opportunity, another opportunity for you guys. Mm. I'm sure you didn't have the kindness of your ass. Nah. My heart is kind, but that's not the place it's coming from this time. I appreciate the honesty. James. So then, what have you got for the lads? You saw the setup they got, the vultures. It's pretty. It's professional, isn't it? You'd agree with that. I think it's fair, I mean. We're just better at it, isn't it? We're better at it, than them. Imagine what you could do with their facilities, mm. with their turf, with their manpower. Mm. Where are you getting at you? It's common knowledge that we're at head-to-head, us and the vultures. It's not good for business and we want to finish it. Especially not when you've got rats from everywhere and you're getting shot in the street. Exactly. We're hoping we could work together to take them out once and for all. Your pay, your payment, or your part of the deal, or your reward for helping us out. You can have their, you can have everything their goods, their distribution network, their buildings. We just want them gone. The thing we don't know how to do at the minute is how how to do it basically. <laughs> and he does laugh at that, you know. <laughs> I was just wondering if you saw anything when you when you were poking around. Well, that would be a bit of a pickle, wouldn't it? You know, you're trying to kill someone, you're not to it. <laughs> We've got a few options. We, we just want just, just want your inside knowledge on. I thought it. I'd just you know, yeah, and then go and you just pull it out and you just puts the fingers to your head and just go blam. Perhaps it'll be that simple. Mm. See one of the leaders, you know, Scope. Mm. She's a she's a sneaky bitch. Mm. Yeah, she's a dangerous that one, isn't she? Yeah, it's hard to get close. Well, she's got you in there. Yeah, exactly. Not something I'd fancy going up myself against. You want to get her on there? And she's got her back turned, like you know, stick a knife in that. You ain't never gonna. Uh, Kill her if she sees you coming. Exactly. She'll kill your, uh, kill your dead certain show from a distance. Though. Well, we know, we know you guys are sneaky. I was wondering if you could I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you know many of the hidden passageways in in Dustfall and around the Vultures turf. Perhaps we can get in there nice and sneaky, mm. and. 
get her on our terms. Seems like a decent idea. You only your man use a knife and a blade. I mean, I don't know you guys have had some rough and tumble. Yeah, we usually like to make noise, but I think for this one we'd we'd prefer not to. We tried the noise route, it didn't go very well. No, oh, you guys have got a couple of wonder posters up in the city. I had some decent money for your capture. Mm. They've not got my good angle. <laughs> Never do. I don't think the uh, blue coat photographers are too busy with how good they look, as long as they're recognisable. Uh, regrettable. Regrettable indeed. Okay. So, are you asking for our help, or are you asking for information? I think we need to do this together. Both of us. Both gangs working together. Don't Is that something that benefits the both of us? I think we both need to get our hands dirty in this one. Mm. We can pay you to do it yourselves if you think we'll get in the way. Be You've been honest with me, so I'll have a roll drink kind. I, uh... I'd rather have you men there because no bodies for scope to shoot at. <laughs> That's likely one of ours, or even my own. Very true. I like the way you think, pragmatic. Mm. That's right. Because she's the dangerous one, alright. That rifle of hers, he doesn't often miss. Hitting him on this turf will be good. Silk shores full of narrow alleys and twisting canals. It would be nice to separate her from that rifle of hers. It would be. That bitch got a license from somewhere. So we'll give her that license. But, uh. Won't make much, won't make much of a difference. Bit of paper isn't gonna save her. So, yeah. Okay. Do I take it that you are on board? I'm not sure if that's a pun, given our affinity to boats, but. Yeah. Okay. We've got the details, but we can get you in. We can supply men. Can Good. So ensure. I'm so glad I'm on zero stress for this session. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, let's talk details then. Okay. Pool our knowledge and. Have a little shake around and see what tumbles out. Absolutely. Well, we've got a, a gather information role we can do around uh, Crow's Foot. Obviously, it's only on our turf. Um, but I suppose we could spend a rep to gather information about Scope and her her movements, like where she, where she might be at a certain time. You know, what the general day-to-day -day nature of, of her... But we're under surveillance. Or? Yeah. Things like that. We don't really have any skulks. No. So one of us might have to do it <laughs> Oh, God. Without her seeing us. Which could be difficult. Is that something the water rats could help with that? Yeah. Uh, how do you want to... Happy to pull their information with you. How do you want to play it? Do you want to, like work out the details now or do you want to go into the school I think we should go for a, for a break yeah because yeah so if we go for a little break yeah you guys figure what we want to do come back the plan ideas Oops. yes sounds okay. good awesome good idea in theory good idea in theory yeah. right guys we'll catch you off 15 minutes we'll get something to eat get a drink formulate some ideas and come back with it or we'll see how coherent it is yeah but awesome don't go anywhere we'll see you in 15 part 2 and tonight's score bye <laughs>